What would happen if the other upper moons were sent to the swordsmith village? Or even better, what if even Muzan himself went? Well, have you ever considered what may happen if Kokoshibo was instead sent to the swordsmith village? So, when Kokoshibo is summoned to the Infinity Castle, he meets with the other upper ranks, including Gyoko and Hantengu. However, Muzan himself appears criticizing the demons for their inability to kill the Ubuyashiki family and retrieve the blue spider lily. Muzan assigned the mission to Kokoshibo instead of Gyoko and Hantengu, but why does Muzan assign the mission to Kokoshibo instead of Gyoko and Hantengu? Well, because he sends a potential threat that all Hashiras will be present. Tanjiro and Katetsu find an old sword in a battle doll and meet Hotaru who offers to clean it. While Tanjiro meets Genya and Morichiro, a powerful demon named Kokoshibo invades the village, endangering everyone. In the middle of the night, Murichiro wakes Tanjo to ask about someone named Kozo Kanamori. However, they are abruptly interrupted by the menacing presence of Kokoshibo. The Hashira unsheathes his blade and uses Mist Breathing, fourth form, shifting Flow Slash to attack the demon. But Kokoshibo dodges the attack and retaliates with his swords. Despite Murichiro's best efforts, he is no match for the demon's superior strength and swordsmanship, and is quickly overwhelmed and killed in a flurry of slashes. But not before Kokoshibo asks Murichiro to become a demon since he is his descendant, to which Murichiro rejects, deciding his fate. Nezuko and Tanjiro attempt to fight back, but the demon's swift reflexes prove too much for them. So how do Tanjiro and Nezuko fare in their attempt to fight Kokoshibo? Well, Genya comes to their help with a shotgun, but Kokoshibo kills him with his second form, Pearl Flower Moon Gazing, only seeing him as a bug. Tanjiro attempts to grab Kokoshibo's attention with Hinokami Kagura but fails, and is brutally attacked with Kokoshibo's seventh form, Mirror of Misfortune, Moonlit, leading to his death but not before Kokoshibo says how sad it is to see the inheritor of Sun Breathing be that weak. Nezuko becomes enraged when she sees her brother defeated and decides to attack Kokoshibo. During the intense battle against Kokoshibo, Nezuko is left alone to face the demon. So what happens during the battle? And how does the battle ultimately end? Well, Kokoshibo slices off Nezuko's arm, but she regenerates it. Nezuko fights back, but Kokoshibo's speed overwhelms her. Nezuko uses moon breathing, but Kokoshibo's skills and intelligence allow him to kill her. As the story unfolds, Mitsuri Kanroji witnesses the tragic demise of her fellow demon slayers at the hands of Kokoshibo. So how does Mitsuri Kanroji perform against Kokoshibo in their battle? Well, with her unique sword and love breathing techniques. A fierce battle ensues between Mitsuri and Kokoshibo, but the demon's sharp reflexes prove to be a daunting challenge for Mitsuri. Kokoshibo unleashes his moon dragon ringtail technique, sending waves of deadly crescent moon blades towards Mitsuri. Despite her valiant efforts, Mitsuri is unable to keep up with the relentless onslaught and ultimately falls to Kokoshibo. Kokoshibo emerges as the victor, leaving the love Hashira at his mercy and as he continues to decimate the village. After Kokoshibo's overpowering victory, we'll be exploring what if Nakime, the genuinely loyal demon from the Infinity Castle, was sent to the swordsmith village instead. Well, Akaza was in the Infinity Castle with the other upper ranks, including Doma and Gyoko, when they realized that the demon slayers were coming for an upper rank demon. They talked about their failed attempts to find the blue spider lily and kill the Ubuyashiki family. So how does Muzan react to the demon's lack of success and what role does Nakime play in the situation? Well, Muzan appeared and criticized them for being useless and ordered Nakime to confirm information given by Gyoko because he trusted her obedience. As Tanjiro and Kotetsu stumbled upon an old sword inside a battle doll, they encountered Hotaru Haganezuka who offered to polish it. In the meantime, while Tanjiro met Genya and Morichiro, they sensed a looming threat to the village. Upon investigating, they discovered the presence of Nakime, a demon who had entered the village, watching from the shadows. As the night falls, Morichiro wakes Tanjiro up to ask about Kozo Kanamori's whereabouts. However, their conversation is cut short by the strange presence of Nakime, who starts playing a biwa. So how do Tanjiro, Morichiro, and Nezuko fight Nakime? Well, sensing danger, the Hashira quickly unsheathes his sword and uses Mist Breathing 4th form shifting Flow Slash to attack the demon. But Nakime proved elusive, evading the attack with ease. Muichiro, Tanjiro, and Nezuko combined their efforts to attack Nakime, but Nakime nimbly avoided their strikes. With his speed and masterful swordsmanship, Muichiro launched a series of rapid-fire attacks on Nakime, who couldn't keep up. Genya also joined the fray, firing his shotgun, but to no avail. In a final attempt to defeat the demon, Tanjiro unleashed his mighty Hinokami Kagura, burning Nakime with a fiery attack that caused severe injuries. As Nakime tried to escape using portal creation, Murichiro's speed proved too great, landing a fatal blow with his sword. Nezuko and Genya followed with their own attacks, delivering further damage. 
Finally, Tanjiro uses Hinokami Kagura once more to deal the finishing blow, ultimately defeating Nakime. With Nakime losing, let's consider a different scenario where Doma was sent to the swordsmith village. Will he be able to defeat the skilled swordsmiths and the demon slayer corpse? Well, when Doma is summoned to the Infinity Castle, he meets with the other upper ranks, including Gyoko and Hantengu. Muzan informs them of Gyotaro's death and the incomplete number of the upper ranks. However, Muzan criticizes the demons for their inability to kill the Ubuyashiki family and retrieve the Blue Spider Lily. Doma apologizes for his insufficient search skills, so will Doma be given another chance to prove himself? Luckily, Muzan orders Doma to go instead of Gyoko because he wants to give him a chance to prove himself and because he's annoying. Tanjiro and Katetsu found a 300-year-old rusty sword in a doll. They gave it to eccentric swordsmith Hotaru for restoration. While waiting, Hotaru gave Tanjiro a temporary replacement, as Tanjiro confides in Genya, who rebuffs him due to hunger. On the way home, a woman sees Doma and he eats her, claiming the village women are tasty and it was a good thing he was assigned this job as he can have a feast. At night, Murichiro wakes Tanjiro up to ask about Kozo Kanamori's whereabouts, but they're interrupted by the strong presence of Doma. So how do Nezuko, Tanjiro, and Murichiro attempt to fight Doma? And what is the outcome of their efforts? Well, Murichiro attacks the demon, who counterattacks using Tessenjutsu. Doma mockingly tells Murichiro to take it easy. In response, Murichiro insults Doma, which suddenly makes Doma confused and makes him say that it isn't nice to insult someone. Doma unleashes his freezing clouds attack, causing a massive wave of cold wind that sends Murichiro flying and wrecks havoc in the room. Nezuko and Tanjiro try to strike Doma, but the demon's lightning-fast reflexes easily dodge their attacks. Genya shows up with a shotgun, but Doma quickly dispatches him using his blood demon art, Cryokinesis. Tanjiro attempts to use Hinokami Kagura to distract Doma, but his efforts prove futile. Doma injures Tanjiro severely using his frozen lotus attack while saying that Tanjiro should have thought a lot more before fighting him in a joking manner. Although Tanjiro manages to survive, his injuries are severe. Murichiro comes back to help Tanjiro but meets Katetsu, who asks about what happened. After an intense battle against upper rank 2, Doma, Tanjiro falls unconscious, leaving Nezuko to face the demon alone. So how does Nezuko fare in her battle against Doma? And what ultimately happens to her? Sadly, despite her combat skills and blood demon art, she is overpowered by Doma's quick thinking and Tessenjutsu abilities. Doma freezes Nezuko with his cold white princess's technique and kills her with his cryokinesis. Tanjiro wakes up to witness his sister's death and tries to attack, but fails. Eventually, Tanjiro, Nezuko, and Genya all die in battle. In the forest, Murichiro asks Kozo for a repaired blade, which Tanjiro had asked him to fix. When Murichiro and Kotatsu return to the battlefield, they find that Tanjiro, Nezuko, and Genya have been killed. Murichiro tries to attack Doma, but the demon avoids his strike effortlessly. Murichiro faces off against Doma, wielding his mist-breathing techniques in hopes of taking him down. However, despite his skills, Doma's immense regeneration and speed proves to be a significant obstacle. In a moment of desperation, Murichiro sees a vision of Tanjiro Kamado, who encourages him to determine his own destiny and assures him that help is on the way. The battle intensifies, with Doma demonstrating his mastery of both the Freezing Clouds technique and Tessenjutsu. Kotetsu attempts to intervene. So what happens when Kotetsu tries to join the fight? And how does his intervention impact the outcome of the battle? Sadly, Kotetsu tragically falls to Doma's wintry icicles, impaled by countless shards of ice. Murichiro becomes enraged and vows to avenge Kotetsu's death, escalating the conflict even further. In the midst of the intense battle between Murichiro and Doma, Mitsuri Kanroji makes her grand entrance to join the fight. With her love-breathing techniques and unique sword, Mitsuri battles fiercely against the powerful demon. So what happens during the battle between Mitsuri Kanroji, Murichiro, and Doma? And how does it ultimately end? Well, Doma uses a cold wind and his fans to freeze Mitsuri's eyes, gaining the upper hand in a battle against her and Murichiro. He even asks Mitsuri to join his cult and be forever happy with him. Despite their efforts, Doma proves to be too strong with his regenerative abilities, stamina, and intellect. Mitsuri and Murichiro's demon slayer marks fail to appear and their chances of winning slowly fade away. Doma uses a combination of Tessenjutsu and Cryokinesis attacks to overwhelm the duo as he now thinks the fight is becoming boring, with Morichiro unable to stop him. Doma emerges victorious, eating Mitsuri and finishing off Morichiro. This leaves the two Hashiras defeated and at the mercy of Doma's power, continuing to devour women and kill swordsmiths in the village, having a laugh all the while. After Doma's happy massacre, have you ever wondered what would have happened if Akaza was sent to the swordsmith village? Well, as Akaza finds himself in the Infinity Castle, he realizes that his summoning means the demon slayers are at an advantage in the war. He meets four fellow upper ranks, including Doma and Yoko, 
and they discuss their failure to find this blue spider lily and kill the Ubuyashiki family. So what will be their punishment? Well, Muzan appears and scolds the upper ranks, labeling them as worthless and ordering them to fight with more urgency. Muzan then orders Akaza to kill the demon slayer Tanjiro, whom he failed to finish during their previous encounter. As the upper moons do their meeting, Tanjiro and Katetsu discover an ancient sword inside a battle doll and are approached by Hotaru Haganezuka, who offers to polish it. Meanwhile, Tanjiro meets Genya and Moichiro, who sends something in him. The village is in danger as a powerful demon named Akaza has infiltrated it as he asks any good fighter to challenge him. At night, Muichiro wakes Tanjiro up to inquire about Kozo Kanamori's whereabouts, but they are interrupted by an intimidating presence. Focusing only on Tanjiro, Akaza begins his attack, and Tanjiro realizes that this is the same demon who killed Rengoku. Muichiro rushes towards Akaza, quickly unleashing his misbreathing fourth form shifting flow slash. Unfortunately, Akaza's lightning fast reflexes allow him to retaliate with his blood demon art destructive death which sends Murichiro flying away in a devastating blast. But can Tanjiro and the others effectively fight against Akaza when Genya attempts to stop him with a shotgun? Sadly, Akaza kills Genya with his masterful hand-to-hand -hand combatant ability. Tanjiro uses Hinokami Kagura to attract Akaza's attention but fails. In the final moments, Akaza ruthlessly ends Tanjiro's life with his devastating technique, the destructive death. After landing safely, although quite far, Murichiro returns to help Tanjiro against a demon. However, he encounters Katetsu, who asks what happened, and Murichiro explains. As the aftermath of the grueling battle against Upper Rank 3 comes to a close, a lifeless Tanjiro lies on the ground. Unable to contain her emotions, an angry and grieving Nezuko attacks Akaza without a second thought, but is it possible for Nezuko to gain an advantage over Akaza especially since she's a girl? Unfortunately, Nezuko struggles to keep up with his incredible strength and technique. With his mastery of Soryu style, Akaza easily crushes Nezuko, leading to her tragic defeat. Although he recognizes her as a worthy opponent, he chooses not to consume her. Despite her courageous fight, Nezuko proves unable to overcome the demon's power. In the forest, Murichiro discovers his sword as a chip and asks Kozo to repair it. Kozo reveals that Tanjiro had asked him to fix it. Murichiro and Kotetsu come to assist Tanjiro against Akaza, but they find out that Tanjiro and Genya are already dead. Murichiro tries to attack Akaza, but the demon easily evades him. Akaza is intrigued by Murichiro's aura and offers him the chance to become a demon. However, Murichiro declines and goes on the offensive, forcing Akaza to fight back. Murichiro fights against Akaza using his misbreathing technique, but does the use of his misbreathing technique prove sufficient to keep up with Akaza's speed? Unfortunately, Akaza's speed proves too much for him. Tanjiro Kamado appears in a vision, urging Murichiro to choose his own fate and promising help. Akaza gains the upper hand, killing Kotetsu when he tries to intervene. This drives Murichiro to seek revenge for the demon slayer corpse and Kotetsu's death. As the battle between Murichiro and Akaza rages on, Mitsuri Kanroji arrives and joins the fight. Using her love-breathing techniques and unique sword, Mitsuri fights fiercely against the demon. However, despite their combined efforts, Akaza proves too powerful for the two Hashiras with his tactical intellect, unlimited stamina, and endurance. However, can Murichiro and Mitsuri overcome Akaza's advantages using their unique breathing techniques and swords? He predicts their moves and counters with equal power. He unleashes a destructive shockwave, which Mitsuri miraculously survives. But the fight takes a toll on their stamina. As the battle rages on, Mitsuri and Murichiro's demon marks fail to manifest without Tanjiro's presence, and their chances of winning slowly fade. Murichiro lands a counter-attack, but it is not enough to stop Akaza's sharp and powerful Soryu-style attacks. Ultimately, the two Hashiras are no match for Akaza, and he emerges victorious, as Akaza continues to annihilate the village, killing swordsmiths and villagers. Finally, after all the upper moons, this time, we'll be exploring what would happen if Muzan went to the swordsmith village. Would he be able to defeat the skilled swordsmiths and the demon slayer corpse with his unique abilities and powers? Well, in the Infinity Castle, the upper ranks meet after being summoned by Muzan. The mission is to eliminate the Ubuyashiki family and acquire the rare blue spider lily, disappointed by their failures. So, how does Muzan react and what happens next? Well, Muzan reprimands the demons. He verifies the location disclosed by Gyoko and goes there himself to make sure everything goes well. Tanjiro and Kotetsu stumble upon an old sword inside the battle doll and seek Kotaru's help in restoring it. While doing so, Tanjiro encounters Genya and Murichiro who send something amiss about him. However, their peace is short-lived as Muzan invades the village. So what happens when Muzan infiltrates the village? Well, while walking home from the hot springs, a drunken swordsmith encounters Muzan disguised as a wealthy gentleman. When the swordsmith annoyingly talks to him, Muzan grows irritated and punches him to kingdom come with one blow. In the dead of night, 
Morichiro awakens Tanjiro to inquire about Kozuka no Mori when they're suddenly confronted by the ominous presence of Muzan. Upon seeing Tanjiro, Muzan is triggered by a traumatic memory of Irichi and becomes furious at the sight of him. Muzan proceeds to target Tanjiro, but instead of backing down, Tanjiro launches a Hinokami Kagura attack at Muzan. However, Muzan, after overcoming his fear, easily counters and brutally kills Tanjiro. Nezuko and Murichiro witness the gruesome scene and attempt to fight back. Murichiro launches a misbreathing attack but Muzan's speed and reflexes are too great. Muzan overpowers Murichiro and kills him as well. Nezuko attacks Muzan but is spared but not before having all her limbs torn off, as Muzan intends to use her for his experiments. As Genya arrives to help Nezuko with a shotgun, Muzan swiftly kills him with a single strike. In the Swordsmith village, an alert of an impending demon attack is declared as a powerful demon emerges and assaults the village. A Kasugai crow then flies in, urgently summoning help to the village. Eager to save the villagers, Mitsuri hurries to the scene of the attack. Upon reaching the village, Mitsuri is horrified to find it in ruins with swordsmiths and villagers alike being brutally slaughtered. In the building where Tanjiro, Nezuko, Genya, and Murichiro are presumed to have died, she suddenly comes face to face with Muzan himself. So was Mitsuri able to defeat Muzan and protect the village? Sadly, Muzan's incredible power and swift reflexes prove too much for Mitsuri to handle. Armed with her unique sword and love-breathing techniques, she engages Muzan in a fierce battle. However, Muzan emerges victorious, killing the Love Hashira with a single blow, leaving the Love Hashira defeated and devastating the village, removing the Demon Slayer's ability to fight back. Thank you for joining us as we explore a what-if scenario in the world of Demon Slayer. We hope you enjoyed this episode about what might happen if other upper moons were sent away instead of Gyoko and Hantengu. And if you're curious about what would happen if other Hashiras were sent to the Mugen Train, be sure to check out our next video. Until then, happy Demon Slaying!